Welcome, Preston. Thanks so much for joining, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ray. Yeah, definitely. Um, always loving your photography, man. So you're younger, right? How old are you? I'm 16. Okay, yeah. So many of you young guys just doing amazing stuff. It's really awesome to see. Uh, how long have you been doing wildlife photography? Um, just just a little over a year now. Probably no a kidding. year and like three months or something like that. So wow, I'm man. Not sure my exact start date, but okay, yeah. What got you into it? Um, I want to somewhere like a year and a half ago. I heard a screech owl outside outside my window in the middle of the night. And did you know what it was and, at the time? Uh, no, not at the time. But okay. I, and then I started digging into the into the owls and stuff, and yeah, and then it slowly just evolved into picking up my mom's DSLR and stuff like that. So. Okay. <laughs> nice man, that's awesome. Uh, are your parents into uh, wildlife as well? Uh, yeah, my dad he's a he's a private lands biologist, so he does like stuff with wildlife and all that. But yeah. So I've kind of grown up around it. Okay. So, um, either of them into photographing wildlife is that why your mom had a dslr or was that just for shooting whatever so she she actually used to do like portraits for people in like sports okay. and stuff like that so but no oh, not, cool. they don't photograph wildlife or anything but gotcha yeah i assume at that point since they're both kind of into photography and the wildlife aspect they kind of really enjoy what you're doing right yeah yeah they do yeah. nice man i gotta say just scrolling through your feed I love this the context of this is so cool having the heron in the foreground there yeah thank you I was, was this heron out actually hunting these crabs or um i think it was trying to but yeah. it was at a least turn colony and it, ah. it, the turns just would not leave the thing alone so <laughs> it was just constantly getting dive bombed so yeah did it last long or did they end up chasing it off it lasted maybe maybe 10 minutes oh that's pretty good eventually yeah it was it lasted a while and then yeah uh, well, it just, it really still tells like a really cool story seeing the, uh, the hair in there. So uh, anyway, really creative shot. Uh, really love your photography, man. You're doing some really amazing stuff. Like the lighting is uh, just incredible, just beautiful stuff there. Some really cool silhouette stuff. So, uh, so yeah, uh, really good stuff, man. And, and thanks so much for joining. So you ready to jump into this? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. I'll start with one that you picked. Oh, real quick too. I also wanted to just tell everybody listening, I haven't really introduced what this whole concept is uh, to everybody. So I guess I figured I'd finally uh, do that. And uh, basically I'm just having different photographers on. Um, people that uh, I, I asked publicly if anybody wanted to join me on this. And so I had a bunch of people reach out and say they'd like to hop on the video with me and share their favorite photos. So that's basically what we're doing here. And Preston was kind enough to say he would join me and I picked out some of his five favorite photos, which I've got a quick glance at and they're all amazing. You picked some really good stuff, by the way. And so, yeah, then we're just going to kind of share them, talk about them and uh, say everything that we really like about it. So it's a great way to just kind of share some hopefully new photography to you uh, or maybe just kind of review some photography that maybe you've seen already in the past. And so for anybody that's interested and you maybe want to come join me on this, uh, certainly shoot me a message and I'll uh, add you to the list and see if we can get you on the show. All right. So here we go, Preston. The first one that you picked out um, from, boy, that's a tough name to say, right? Marco Giotti, maybe something like that. You want to give yeah. it a, a shot? <laughs> I, yeah. You'll let me have that. that is years. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyway, um, taken up in uh, Svalbard, uh, incredible shot, man. Talk about scenery and colors uh, this polar bear out there i mean this really shows off the habitat you know i've seen some incredible uh, polar bear photos that are close up in some of that beautiful you know nordic light like that northern um light that you get that i think kind of only happens up in those latitudes really up high like that and they're close and detailed and great but this is a whole different concept that really shows off the habitat there uh, just i mean this is a gorgeous scene without the bear right with these mm -hmm. colors and everything but uh this i mean that that light right there just kind of skimming across those are just incredible and then having just the little bear down there which is so cool that the the bear even that small in the frame just still stands out so well is absolutely amazing to me and i also kind of like how a lot of these lines kind of point down to here and then this curve just kind of swoops you right down to the bear there and then whatever you know this lighter area just kind of leads right over to the bear so um, all kinds of really cool lines that just kind of really help uh, bring your your eye right into that bear so uh, yeah those are my thoughts what what really made you pick this one out so for me um, small in frame it's like one of my favorite 
favorite styles and oh, nice. yeah they're just like i really like the look of them and then like so like you said with the colors too i feel like it can be really easy um especially with how white the snow is and everything to make it almost look a little bit sickly and stuff yeah but like the colors here they're they're really nice and like you said they just the whole scene together even without the bear would be nice but and it all just comes together really nicely and all those leading lines and stuff and yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, you know what? It's a really good point what you said about the color too. So many of these Arctic photos like this don't have any color in the scene, right? It's just, you know, whites, maybe blacks, some browns maybe, if that, or it's just, you know, kind of all whited out. Uh, so to introduce that kind of rosy color up at the top there is uh, something definitely unique from that sort of uh, area, you know? So yeah, that's a, that's a really cool shot, man. Well done. And yeah. you know what's funny? I, so I follow him, but had just not kind of really seen this photo or, or taken time with it, you know? Yeah. It, it's um, kind of funny how you can follow photographers and still miss photos because there's just so much to see on Instagram, you know? <laughs> yeah, I get that too. Like, I don't, I mean, I follow him as well, but I don't think I'd seen this photo until like it had been sent to me. I'm not sure. It was okay. by one of the people I talked to, but yeah, yeah, like you said, your feed just gets so, so full and Yep. There's not that much time to go through it all. So. Exactly. Yeah. If we spent enough time to see all the photos, we'd never be out shooting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you really liked the small in the frame thing. How long ago did that start for you? Kind of being interested in that concept, like that style of photography. Uh, it couldn't have been that long ago. Okay. Because for like probably at least the first six months or something of my photography, I was all about like the really tight, colorful portraits and stuff yeah. like that. But so probably nice. not that long ago, but cool. It's a fun challenge though, isn't it? Yeah, it is very yeah. difficult. Like to get yeah. the subject to stand out and all, everything exactly. like that. It's yeah. I love it though. though too. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next one. Here's one I chose from uh Terje Kulas. Yeah, it's a really cool photo. Um, I love him. He's a, he's a great photographer. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anything, yeah, I mean... uh, anything stand out to you on this one? Yeah, all those little splashes and like uh, the shape, it's almost right. like a, it's a swirl. Like it leads your eye yeah. right to the bird, even if, even it's like the first thing that you see and then you go out and yeah, you see all the little swirls and all the little splashes and everything like that. And it just, I don't know, <laughs> like the contrast yeah. look is really cool. Yeah, that was totally the one thing that uh, really drew me to this photo as well was that swirl, you know, the swirling nature of that, how it's kind of spinning around it. So you obviously, I think it kind of tells that this bird was probably, whether it caught a fish or not, uh, it, to me anyway, just knowing how turns behave, it probably just had a dive and it just come up out of the water and then did one of those shakes in the air, which kind of probably is what's making that, that swirling shape. So, uh, you know, even in such a, we can barely see the bird itself. It's just an outline and it's just a splash that still manages to tell such a story of the shot to me. And I think that's kind of something that's really amazing when a photographer can do that with such a uh, almost minimal photo, you know? Yeah. I feel like anyone who's really like spent time with turns like that, like you've seen that happen. Yeah, you've exactly. seen them shake the water off and, and you try to get the shot every time, but you can never, yeah. like it's something <laughs> yeah. you miss all the time. And yep. It's frustrating, but like, he, he captured it here pretty well. And then he gets it with like this ridiculously mm -hmm. amazing light. So, you know, classic of him. So <laughs> never boring light. Yeah, so sure. cool, man. All right, let's jump to the next one. Ah, our boy, Adam. Nice. Uh, this one is funny. So I think this is in the series of a photo. I kind of reviewed talking to him years ago at this point on, on some other show that I did, uh, probably the, um, wildlife inspired show but uh yeah i mean talk about small in frame and a beautiful habitat don't you wish we had habitat like that over here <laughs> yeah i, I Although, look at that i have to say you're so you're uh, based out of florida right mm -hmm. yeah yep. so there's a few areas i've walked into in florida that aren't quite as lush as this but start to get into that vibe where you have like spanish moss hanging and stuff and i know this is different than spanish moss but um i've seen similar down there man up here in the northeast there's nothing like that <laughs> uh but yeah anyway uh incredible light on this um if i recall he was shooting in this with a, a much wider angle lens uh from when i talked to him about this whole series that he shot and so i think it's you know somewhere in the probably 24 to 35 millimeter range but 
Uh, you can really see he's just showing off the habitat like crazy. It's a beautiful habitat, just like the previous photo you chose. Um, a beautiful photo of just the landscape without the wildlife even in it. And then add into it this barred owl and the way it stands out right on that you know, mossy perch right there, looking right towards you, that glow coming in from the background. There's just, there's a lot of depth to this photo, um, a lot to look at, and yet the subject still stands out, you know? Um, I think being that there's almost so much green in the photo that there's not much left to just be that kind of brown or gray that really helps make the bird stand out. And, and now that I really look at it too, like if we cut this photo in half, the whole right half is almost all green except for the bird. And then on the left half though, you got this bark, this tree trunk, this tree trunk, right? So almost mimicking the color of the barred owl uh, kind of offsets on the left side, but then we don't have that on the right side. So it helps to make the bird stand out even more. So uh, it's just incredible how the way this photo comes together and just a nice angle here. The ferns growing out of this stuff. It's like, oh, man, uh, uh, it it all it does to me is make me want to be like, oh, I wish I was there right now. <laughs> yeah, I definitely get that feel, too. Like like the forest, it just looks beautiful. And yeah. like a wide angle shot like that, like you said, it's not easy to get the bird to stand out at all. No. And like all every little detail in that photo you have to make sure nothing's like nothing's taking over the photo, I guess. And yep. in his edit there, like you can tell he definitely like put some time into it and that light yes. is definitely enhanced and stuff, but it's still, it's still like gives you that foresty feel and makes it feel, it just gives that attention to the bird and it doesn't feel unnatural. Exactly. Yeah. It just all comes together really, really well. He did a good job on that one. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I, I 100% agree with you in that, yeah, you can tell he certainly, you know, I mean, obviously, if the light's coming from back here, right, uh, the bird would probably in the original capture maybe be a little bit darker. So he obviously lightened it up to make it stand out, but it all feels right. It doesn't feel like, like, oh, that bird's like way too dodged or anything like that. It just it feels natural. It looks great. And man, it all works together well. So, yeah, yeah I feel like it can be really easy to overdo shots like that on the edit. Oh, I've totally done it myself. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful shot, man. Nice choice. What do you think of that? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's <laughs> I've seen a few shots, not many, but a few with the sun reflecting through the birds, uh, yep. primaries like that and creating the, the rainbow effect. And it's one of those things. It's like right place, right time. And yeah, kind of just, I, I like about it because you're taking light that you're not normally shooting in, like that harsh light that's difficult to work with, and you're yep. almost you're repurposing it and creating something creative and pretty cool out of it. So no, that's a great point. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And this guy, uh, Christian Spencer, he actually did an entire series of these. Um, he has he has a whole series on his page of these hummingbirds with all kinds of different positions and the rainbows coming through the, the wings like that. So definitely, obviously like a, a project that he started working hard on and really trying to concentrate on. And I bet what you mentioned is probably a great, uh, might be the, the reason it kind of comes about, right? When you, you're, you're already shot in the good light and now you're into that light that maybe you can't do much else with. It's like, what do I do? And then, you know, he came up with this, uh, whether that's the way it happened or not. I don't know. I, I you know, wasn't able to t talk to him about how that project came about, but, uh, regardless of how he came about it, man, he, he put, uh, a lot of work into the entire series and it's so cool to see the different wing positions and light positions that he shot with these. So, uh, a very definitely. unique take. <laughs> Yeah, definitely has to take time for sure. Trying to line up the bird with the with the sun and everything because oh sure gosh, you can yeah. you can get by flowers and stuff, but they're still unpredictable. You never know yep. what they're gonna do. And yeah, yeah, the way those things zip around. <laughs> yeah, definitely took patience, and I've I've tried with hummingbirds, and I was get impatient and frustrated and just yeah. give up on them. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I respect that a lot for yeah, being able to get creative shots like this out of them. So yeah. 
Yeah, and it's funny too. I noticed in his caption, I was just kind of looking at that. He has to. He he mentions over here. It contains no digital manipulation. Photoshop free on that. And it's probably something you have to mention because so many people probably see this and just be like, "Oh, you just painted that in there." And it's like, like you said, you've uh, seen some other photos with that. And I know I've certainly captured uh, only a handful, totally by accident, where the sun's coming through the wings like that, and you get that. Uh, refraction of light and it gives you the colors but uh yeah it's pretty amazing that that can happen you know yeah it is it's like you would never think just looking at a bird but then it's one of those things yeah you never know it until you see it yep yeah and it's easy to think it's fake like without exactly yeah i mean without reading the caption (laughs) totally A, a great reason to try different lighting for sure all right we'll see what we got up next oh Man, Johnny killed it with that. This one is uh, such a great screech. Um, the texture on the the cavity there is amazing. And then the bokeh back there. And it's got that bluish kind of night feel to it, which is awesome because that's probably when it's out. Uh, you can tell it's not a midday shot just by how large the pupils are on the bird. They're really large, so it's gathering a lot of light. So it's definitely dusk or close to it. Um, I don't know whether it was a morning or evening. I'm assuming evening, like, you know, a night shot, but, uh, man, I, it's so funny. I have still to this day, never photographed a screech off of like a, a man-made nest box. Uh, so (laughs) I'm definitely jealous of these kinds of shots. And again, with definitely some processing, I can see he did like a good edit to it, but it feels right. You know, nothing feels absurd. It doesn't feel like heavily pushed in one direction or another it just it all feels just right there and uh it gives me the sense of this bird is emerging for the evening and just getting like probably like the moment after this was taken it like took off and went off into the night you know that's like the story that i get from this photo yeah it's definitely like a good one like you said the edit is spot on he he definitely put some work into that because it's not i've had some of these blue hour encounters with owls and it's Mm -hmm. not the edits are always so difficult and to get it yeah. to look natural and make the owl feel alive still is definitely, definitely difficult. And I, I, I've had some chats with him and stuff. And I think he said this was a three second exposure oh, wow. So to get the, to get the owl sharp and everything. And it's like, yeah. it's pretty crazy. It's that's really crazy. Yeah. All right. So it was mm-hmm. definitely dark. <laughs> yeah. I think it was evening, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, the pupils, it like it adds a whole new story and makes the owl feel alive. It's yeah. definitely a lot better than an owl with squinty eyes in a tree. The with sleepy a daytime look, right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, feel they like totally that's what have, you see the, they, owl the most. they have like a different personality at night, you know. I've actually yeah. seen them in person in the, you know, late night and that sort of thing. I've just never had my camera with me. Um but yeah, it's uh it's really cool. And you know, you said you've mentioned you've had a few blue hour encounters with different species and struggle with the edit. What are some of the things you find that are difficult with that edit? Mainly for me, just getting the bird to stand out. Um, Cause everything's pretty much the same tone Yep. and the same brightness and everything. And yeah. when you're shooting that dark, the quality becomes an issue as well. Sure. So you're, it's, it's difficult cause you don't want to brighten things too much to where it's just a noisy mess. And, but you also wanted to get it to stand out and look natural. So it's just, and also the, the temperature of the image yeah. too can be, because it can go way too blue really quick, or it can just look muddy. Yeah. And then also the tint, it can look really purple or really green really quick. It's, I feel like it's sensitive with the colors for sure. Very, yeah. Yeah, because there's so much of that blue tone to begin with, which actually really... You know, on the white balance slider, it's the complete opposite of that warm uh, yellowish reddish tone. And so because there's all that blue, all those colors that we so normally see in many natural scenes are kind of taken out of the photo just naturally based on the color of the light. So trying to bring them back in in the right balance, like you said, is challenging. And then I also think that a big challenge with any blue hour is making it look blue hour. Like you said, right, you don't in addition to lightening it and having a noisy mess, you can also lighten it and just kind of make it look daylight. And you're taking that mood away from the shot because it kind of wasn't, that's not how it looked when it was there, you know? Yeah. It can be really easy to do that too. Like to yep. make it look daylight. Cause that's what you're like programmed to do doing all your other shots. <laughs> yes. You want it to look 
look natural like the daylight and then you yeah, get this yeah, yeah. random weird blue hour shot and you're like what do i do with this and then you yep. just start doing what you normally do and then it looks completely wrong so yeah you, you don't want to do a white balance click on the whites because it'll just make it totally like the wrong white balance yeah uh so yeah yeah but this is a great shot man nice nice choice by johnny and i've uh i had a chance to actually shoot with him once so that was, it was a fun time um, last winter there oh, wow. you go that reflection's pretty sweet I, right man it's yeah. it's one of those things where you're like oh it's not that hard to get a reflection but then you go out and try it and it's it's hard to get a reflection yeah and like with the lights and like the lighting here is really good and the dark background and everything bird stands out so well yeah it's really it's really nice <laughs> yeah i um have have you experienced so I, I know you already have enough knowledge to know like you know you're shooting water level birds you're trying to get low get that low perspective and have you kind of realized like the lower you get the harder it is to get a clear reflection yep it yeah. starts getting all stretched out and all exactly all. it starts getting smeared right yeah so mm -hmm. easily if there's any disturbance in the water and you're that low you're going to get that smear and you can see it a little bit here right there's just like a little bit of that that vertical smearing that's happening there from his low perspective um but it's yeah. still relatively clear and it's funny this is if you were trying to shoot just a reflection, that would be motivation to actually get higher, you know, mm -hmm. um, because then it actually does get more clear when you're shooting at that steeper angle, but then you lose that, that kind of intimate uh, view with the subject. But um, yeah, if you get lucky and get one of those absolutely calm days, which happen like twice a year, then you can start to get these clear reflections and the really low perspective. So yeah, the challenge you mentioned is real. <laughs> everything needs to kind of come together. Like you said, the weather needs to be perfect and yeah. you can't, you can't be too high or you can't be too low. And yep. it's that whole balance. Cause like you said, you get too low, the, the reflection smears and you get too high and it just, it doesn't look right. Cause you're not, yep. not on the eye level with the bird and everything. So. Yeah. I had that exact problem. Um, just a few days ago, I was sitting in a hide for a Kingfisher. So I was just sitting up in a chair and I had him out there eye level on some perches I'd set up. And then a wood duck comes swimming in. Speaking of wood ducks that you were trying to work with. So a lone Drake wood duck, beautiful plumage. He's all crisp and clean looking. Comes swimming right in. No, no joke, Preston, three feet off the shore, right in front of me. He's like swimming five feet away. I, have, I threw a story on Instagram because I just shot a video with my phone where you can see him clear as day right there. And I'm like shooting through the camo screen, you know. <laughs> And so I'm like, yeah, this is when the wood duck comes that close. Anyway, foggy morning, dead calm, right? The water's like glass. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? I'm sitting up here, you know? Anyway, long story short, Kingfisher leaves, duck swims down the water a little bit. I'm able to climb out of the hide and then um, lay on the shoreline, get really low. And then the duck swims back. And then I was able to get the shots. The lighting was not nearly as cool as the shot we see from Philip here. But um, I had it because it was foggy. It was it, he came in close enough. I got a really nice clear view. But I did. I was able to get that low crystal clear reflection. So it was one of the. That was one of my two times this year. <laughs> it's crazy, like how yeah. how rare it is to happen. You wouldn't think so, because it's water. It reflects things, but it's yeah. never never that crisp reflection like you were talking about. And yeah, it's definitely not easy to get. And when it happens, it's really cool. Yeah. And it's funny. There's been so many times where I look at the reflection with my eye and I'm like, oh, it's so calm. It's clear. But then I look through the lens when you kind of magnify everything. You're like, oh, nope, there's disturbances in the water. You can see the little tiny ripples through the lens and you're like, nope, doesn't look clear. Uh, but to your eyes, like just looking at it, it can look totally fine. So uh, anyway, I don't think I mentioned I kind of went off on a, a rant there. But uh, yeah, this photo stood out to me when I was going through looking for photos. Um, the spotlight effect on this one just like jumped off the page at me man the way this bird was lit up in that sun against that black background and then yeah add in that near mirror reflection and it was just like yeah this one's killer so uh, i had to reach out to him and ask and he was he was happy to say go for it so <laughs> yeah it's one of those uh, lots of lots of times you'll edit for that spotlight effect and try and mm -hmm. make it artificially and stuff but with the sun how it how it all played out here it you don't have to do that it yeah. and it looks it stands out amazing yeah it's really yep. really well done Totally agree. Oh, dude, this shot from Tobias. I remember when he posted this, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this kid is on fire, man. 
Uh, yeah, Tobias is such a creative eye. And this shot I, it looks like a gull. I don't know if the caption says here uh, what it is. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see if I can find out. Um, uh, I don't know. It's either, I'm guessing it's either like a gull or a turn. And maybe it says, but I just, I don't want to sit here and read on the podcast. Um, so anyway, the, like, come on with these light rays <laughs> shining down. Like to see that much of a spotlight in the first place is one hell of an achievement. But then to also have it, uh, you know, and I, I can guarantee you he ran and moved or did whatever he had to do to line up this up. It didn't just happen to, to just be there in that beam of light. Um and then also it kind of looks like he maybe uh, stopped down the lens a little bit to get a little bit more, you know, kind of focus to that beam back there. Um, and yeah, just everything on this. I mean, talk about a dramatic small in frame, just, just ridiculously beautiful shot. Um, yeah, I, I'm jealous. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, it's a definitely a really good shot. It's probably one of the better, one of the best goal shots I've ever seen for sure. Yeah. And I think it says down at the bottom of the caption, it was taken at 200 millimeters. Yeah. Which yep. I believe he shoots with the Nikon 200 to 500. So yeah, I think that's a something that can be hard to do to zoom out. Not, it's not like the first thing that comes to your brain. You're like, Oh, zoom all the way in, get on that bird. But you're right. Being able to look at the whole scene and analyze what's going on there in the moment. Yep. I, it's, and this is your product. Like it comes out amazing. It's yeah. And just that spotlight effect like you're talking about, it's, it's great. Yeah, and if we imagine, if you were zoomed in, right, even like that, it's still cool to see that beam of light, you know, on it. But having the start of the beam up there, so much better, in my opinion, you know. Uh, just being able to see that full where it's coming out of the clouds and down, that just really completes the scene. And zooming in doesn't, it just doesn't add anything. And if anything, it takes away. Yeah, I I feel like that's a big issue for sure. Is I always want more space, but I'm I'm always zoomed all the way in. So. <laughs> I was just gonna ask if you shoot if you shoot a zoom lens. Yeah, I shoot the same the Nikon two hundred to five hundred. Okay, all right. Yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've. I sh I was just gonna say I've never shot a zoom lens for wildlife, like for my main wildlife lens. But I shouldn't say that. When I first started. My first wildlife lens was a 70 to 200 millimeter with a teleconverter. Uh, so that was a zoom lens. So I had a whopping 280 on the long end. Um, so, but I quickly upgraded to that. But the, the lens I went to after that was a 300 F4 prime. And then I bought another 300 F4 prime after that and then 500. So um, I haven't shot a zoom lens in a very long time for wildlife. But uh, I could see that being part of the challenge of, you know, always wanting to just max it out and then realizing like, oh, hey, I can... I don't have to run back a hundred yards. <laughs> I can just zoom this thing out, you know? Yeah. I feel like the zoom al almost has its limiters though, as well with the, I feel like you almost get creatively limited because you're just, you get lazy almost. You're just able to zoom right there and stop what you're, you don't have to do all that running around and working angles as much. Yeah. So, but it's definitely, it's convenient being able to yeah, sit there. No and doubt. More. Yeah. And I would say, in my opinion, I think once you, once you really kind of learn and understand all the different parts of, you know, focal length, compression, depth of field, and how those things all kind of relate with different focal lengths and stuff like that, once you really have a good grasp and understanding of that, then I think putting a zoom lens in your hand is, is a benefit at that point, you know? But I think you're right. In, like, if you're in the learning process, the zoom might cause you to kind of miss out on learning some of those aspects and not entirely, but um, maybe, maybe, or maybe even just delay learning some of those because you can just like quickly change that zoom instead of thinking about moving and then seeing how you physically moving changes the, the perspective or the compression, what's included in the foreground, what's included in the background and all those things change with that zoom, not just how much space is around the frame, you know? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, yeah, like you said, it's a whole learning process and it can, yeah. I feel like it can be a limiter, but then again, it can also help you out too, because you don't, you don't have to move and stuff and you don't have that, the possibility to scare the bird away as much. Yep. And, yep. So. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, perfect example. The, the photo we're looking at right now. Uh, let's say hypothetically he didn't have a zoom and then he saw that and realized he wanted to get it. Well, maybe he would have had to stand up and then, you know, go running way back to get that. And then in the time that happens, maybe the bird just naturally leaves or he stands up and scares the bird. Right. So then the shot's lost and, you know, he, he couldn't get it. But whereas having that zoom just allowed him to grab it. So, yeah. And yeah. obviously we can tell you can make amazing photos with a zoom lens and from what we see from you, too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, those yeah. light beams for sure. Especially like the light beams, just the same as a bird. They they disappear quick. Yeah. So, yeah, no doubt. They'll go yeah, in and out in a matter of with clouds seven. moving through like that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, definitely check out Tobias if you don't already. There you go. What do you think of that little guy? <laughs> I really dropped like another it. small in frame for you there. <laughs> I love the environment in it. That's something like I love about yeah. a lot of those like the foresty photos like like yeah. you saw with adam of that picture mm -hmm. yeah and i love the how you don't necessarily it's a silhouette but you don't have direct sunlight or anything it's yep. just using whatever the background elements are so it's pretty cool all the different shapes and stuff going on with the sticks too really cool yeah great point about the uh not having the sun in the background for that silhouette uh, and that's one of the few places where it can happen a lot, I think, is in the forest. You know, you just get these backgrounds that are maybe they're getting hit by sun or just are, are just an opening in the trees to the sky in the background or whatever uh, can really help that out. And, you know, it's funny. I, I also really noticed the perspective on this. It feels like we're looking eye level at this. It doesn't feel like we're looking up at all, which is really cool. Um, it feels like he's either the squirrel is really low or this dude climbed up in a tree <laughs> to shoot out. Uh, or maybe like it could have been like a hill or something like that that he was on, you know. But in any case, um, it's just a great feeling of just being right there looking straight out at this. And, and I also really love just the, the tiniest hint of green up here, but it's not real vibrant. Like I think if this was like a bright green, it would totally pull your attention to it, you know. Um, but it's just like a dull, subtle green. So just like a little accent up here. And you know, all the other lines are nice and hard and crisp with these, these twigs and stuff like that. And then just like this soft patch up there just kind of balances it out nicely, I think. Yeah, I think I think the perspective is definitely a good point because squirrels, I mean, they're always at, you always see them at the top of trees and stuff. Yeah. And it's hard to get eye level with them. And yep. it almost shows a different, different uh, way of their life, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. But yeah. Yeah, and then also, also the little, like you said, the little foreground, the greener background. I think it's foreground of the I, green. I would agree. And it gives you a sense of feel of what the forest is like beyond yep. just the sticks and the trees. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, great point. Man, you're good at this. I got to have you on again. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, I love this shot. I remember when we saw it. <laughs> this is so great. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny that there's multiple birds there and you cannot see that at first like second bird right there uh, there could probably be even more in here i don't know if he says how many are in it uh those are the two i obviously see right there but um i mean talk about showing off the habitat and the camouflage of the species um just incredible and yeah highly commended in the animals and environment and the wildlife photographer of the year huge achievement well deserved on the photo too um, but interestingly on this one, and I like it, it's not something I would normally like, I guess it depends on the way you view the photo, right? So I see there's two different directions to view this photo. One is if we start back here with the scene, which is probably the way most people might view it at first, uh, unless you were told this is a wildlife photo, it would be so easy to overlook these birds there. And so the first thing is, oh, look at the mountains back here that are in focus. These curved lines lead into that mountains, right? So it's drawing my eye back there. But then if I kind of view it the other way of starting back here and using these leading lines to kind of swoop out into the foreground, then it pulls my eye into the birds here and then I notice them. Um, so I, I just feel like it's, it's kind of different to view them. You can view these lines as leading you up towards the background, or you can view them as leading you out into the foreground, uh, kind of depending on the direction you view the photo. And then the other really cool thing with these, what uh, species of ptarmigan? Rock ptarmigan. Okay. Which I believe, I don't see it here, but I think these species at times has that little red spot right over the eye. And uh, what's really cool is you can also see like these red spots on the rocks here. 
uh, which kind of um, probably helped the bird like blend into its habitat, uh, which is which is really cool. But uh, yeah, such a cool shot, man. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite shots from the wildlife photographer of the year. Uh, yeah. The whole the list of 100 for sure. When I was first looking through it. Um, I thought it was just a landscape and then I was looking for a mammal. I was like, what is yeah. it? And, and then I saw one lump and I was like, oh, that's odd. And then I look at it again. I'm like, oh, that's a bird. Yeah. And then for a while I thought it was just, just one bird. And then I saw the second and it was, it, it was crazy. It's definitely something pretty cool. And I think what stands out to me the most is a lot of times to get your subject to stand out, you'll use light in different types of yeah, just like light, you either using spotlight or making the subject darker than your background. But here, here the pattern is broken from yes. the normal snow, and you can see see that little the lump, and that's that's cool to me using the pattern. That's a great of, point. Of the light. Yeah, that is very cool. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that until you pointed it out. That's what kind of clues you in to the bird being there. Yeah, that yeah, and another... wildlife photographer of the year in the caption. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's another one of those shots too, where where it'd be cool just as the landscape, right? And the bird, yeah. The the subject of the animal is just a, a an addition that makes it even better. So yeah, I think that kind of points to a trend that makes good scenic wildlife photos, right? We kind of mentioned that multiple times now, and I think that's an important part of it. So it's not just capturing, um, you know, a bird or any wildlife in any scene, right? Uh, because any scene doesn't always look great, <laughs> you know? So that isn't, I mean, that's just one part of the ingredient. The second part and the huge part in these kinds of shots is making that scene be incredible on its own. And when you can make the two work together like this, and it's such a kind of almost a different way, right? It's, it, this is a photo showing how well these birds hide in the scenery. Uh, and that's the story there, which is awesome versus making the birds stand out the most in the scene, uh, which is just a different direction. So um, and kudos to him for doing it that way, because that's not something I've I think I very rarely have thought to do that with any of my subjects, which is to show how they disappear uh, well versus make them you know, try and do everything I can to make them stand out more. Yeah, it's I think it's definitely everyone or something everyone tries to do as a photographer they want the they want it to be about the stuff like about your animal and making it stand out and everything so yep. it's a it's definitely cool how how he, he used i mean the bird still stands out in its own right and like you said there's that story there but they're they're still hidden and you have to work for work for it i guess and yeah that is a cool that, part of it cool story. yeah i like that you kind of have to work for it and then the other thing the last thing i'll mention about it is but once you see the birds, then you can't unsee them. They're just so plainly obvious. Once you see them, you're like, oh, yeah, the, the bird's right there. That's what this photo is. <laughs> kind of switches up on you. All right, we made it to the last photo. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Dude, we yeah. did not plan you mentioning wood ducks in the beginning of this. Because <laughs> you didn't even know the photos I picked. <laughs> it's all about wood ducks. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That's really cool. Um, that's something... With wood ducks, I feel like that's kind of rare to get the either, I think, I don't know if it's sunrise or sunset, but to get the, the bouquet like that, the bouquet yeah. balls of the sunset, yep. that's, I've struggled with that always with, with wood ducks because they're always in the dense wood, wooded rivers and stuff. Yeah. So yep. it's, it's a cool different, different look on them for sure. And I like, I like how the perch and the bird are all outlined just, just a little bit though, enough to stand out. Yep. So you can tell what's going on, but I feel like it's all about the light here for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And do you, have you photographed them up, you know, perched out of the water very often or is it more on the water? No, I haven't done much perch out on the water. I, I struggle yeah, with either. that, but yeah. it's, it's always been on the water. Well, cause they spend, I mean, they spend more of the daytime on the water. That's usually where they are. You mm -hmm. know, they, they go to the trees more often when they're roosting and that sort of thing. Um, or if they're in the trees, at least by me, a lot of the trees that I've seen them in the trees a bunch and it's, way up there <laughs> so it's yeah. like i'm not gonna get a shot you know uh so yeah the fact that she is eye level on this and it's yeah it's it's the background is just as important as the bird in this case and and i love what you pointed out you know that that little bit of rim light outlining the bird and then the, the log down here that he's perched on uh, just really sets it off and uh and then of course since it's katie i'll just give her crap for this one little like dust spot up there <laughs> 
<laughs> she's been a guest on my podcast so i can do that uh but yeah um absolutely love this shot man and like as soon as i saw it i uh, i immediately bookmarked it because i wanted to ask if i could use it on this show so <laughs> yeah it's it's really cool i, I like the story behind it too because there's that like the really low light the sunset it's the birds about to start roosting and stuff and yep. it's on that on that branch maybe that's where it's roosting i'm not sure maybe Could it's be. just sitting there on the log or something but yeah i think either way it has a pretty cool story behind it so yeah definitely, definitely a cool spot yeah yeah and katie has a, a lot of really good wood duck stuff really creative stuff so she, she works with them a lot so definitely check that out uh, all right man so we made it uh preston thanks so much man that was great you have great insight onto some of these you point out some things i didn't even really think of but as soon as you mentioned them i'm like oh yeah that seems that makes perfect sense so yeah, i really appreciate you ha joining me and chatting about these photos and sharing some great shots with me yeah thanks so much for having me it's, yeah you're very welcome man be some new shots i've never seen before excellent it's cool all right I'll point people in your direction. Everybody go follow Preston. He's got some amazing photography. And uh, with that, I think we will say goodbye. All right. I'll see you. Take it easy, man. You too.